God, living God, lift your hands and just worship Him. Worship Him, worship Him, worship Him. Worship the bread of life. Let's worship Him. Let's worship Him, the creator and the maker. Let's worship Him. The I am that I am, let's worship Him. The God of all possibilities, let's worship Him. The faithful God, let's worship Him. Let's worship Him. Father, we worship You this morning. Three in one, we worship You. Father, Son, and Spirit, we welcome You. We open ourselves to receive everything that you have for us. May your name continually be glorified in our lives in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why don't you turn around our three persons and tell them good morning. It is so good to see you. And make sure you say something nice to them. Say something nice. You're looking glorious. I see the beauty of the Lord all over you. You look so anointed. The devil is afraid. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our God is an awesome God. He's just tremendous. It's just tremendous. You know, we had workers retreat over the weekend. Amen. All those who came for the workers retreat, shout a big, big, big hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And um, those who didn't come, I want to believe that by next next year you will join us in Jesus name it's very good to be active in the kingdom you know God will reward us for whatever it is that we do in his kingdom if we're laborers he will reward us and if we don't do anything to for the kingdom then we will have no reward so it's very good to be active in the kingdom to pour out our hearts to pour out our energy to pour out our gifts everything that God has given us so that we don't just get to heaven and there's no recognition there's no reward amen we should get to heaven and have a lot of recognition and a lot of blessings and a lot of reward amen may you shine as stars here on earth but beyond that may you shine as stars in heaven in Jesus name so we're talking about manifestation of the sons of God. We're talking about manifestation of the sons of God, the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit. You know, God expects us to act like his children. The world expects us. They're actually waiting for us to manifest as children of God. If you look at Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8 verse 19. Romans chapter 8 verse 19 says, For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing or for the manifestation of the sons of God. The creation is eagerly waiting for the manifestation, not of the world. Hallelujah. But they are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. All those who are sons of God, say amen. Amen. And I want you to know that if you're a child of God, you need to bring forth fruit. Amen. Fruit in your character. Fruit in everything about you. When people relate with you, there should be an obvious impression that this person must be a child of God. This person must be a Christian. If you work in an office, Praise the Lord. If you walk in an office, when people come into that office, after relating with you for a while, you say there's something peculiar about you. And that peculiarity should be the fact that you're a son of God. Amen. If you are doing business and people interact with you in, in Nigeria, amen, they should come away from that dealing with you, that business dealing with you, and say, ah, truly, this is a son of God. If you give out contracts, maybe in your company you're the one in charge of giving out contracts and you don't own the company. You just work there as an employee. When people relate with you, you know, when people come asking for contracts, they assume you're going to be like the typical Nigerian who would ask for a kickback. But they relate with you, they found out, you know, their company has made millions of naira. You don't ask for a cent. They come away from that and say, truly, this is a son of God. Hallelujah. In your neighborhood, in your neighborhood and people look at you and they observe your lifestyle they observe when you come in they observe when you go out they observe the way you conduct your life they should come away from that relationship and say ah, truly this person is a son of god this family they are genuine christians amen we as children of god need to bear the fruit of the spirit 
and it should be something that because like, because what I found out is that a lot of people, a lot of people bear the fruit of the spirit in church. <laughs> of course, some don't even bear it in church. Come on, but you know, some people they know how to wear the church face. Come on now, there's even the church dress. Praise the Lord. You know, if you won't wear something to church, you shouldn't wear it outside. Hello. Oh, people they wear everything, everything is well covered, but when they're going to walk, it's a different matter. No, you should be well dressed. Even when people look at your dressing, they should come away when they look. This must be a child of God. <laughs> Amen. You know, I, I had a neighbor at one time and um, she had this tailor. So I said to her, you know, I would like your tailor to come and make some things for me. And um, then I told her, you know, when she came with the tailor, I said, you know what? Everything she's making for me has to cover my body properly. So I don't want any cleavage showing. You know what this my neighbor said to me? She said to me, ah, what some of us are looking for? <laughs> I don't know if you get that. So what some of us are looking for is what you don't want to flaunt. No, we're not supposed to flaunt it if we're children of God. Hallelujah. We should be properly covered. Now, she came away from that having even a stronger impression of the fact that I am a child of God. Manifests as a child of God in every area of your life. Every area of your life. Whether you're at home, whether you're at work, when you're in this nation, when you're outside this nation. Praise the Lord. You should continue to bear the fruit of the spirit. The culture of the place that you are in should not determine the way you, you behave. You know, there's this statement in the world. When you are in Rome, you, you act like what? You act like the Romans. No, you're not allowed to act like the Romans even when you are in Rome. You're allowed to act as a Christian no matter where it is you are. Amen. We must bear the fruit of the spirit. Now, let me say something as we begin to look at these fruits. You know, we're all different. We all have different temperaments. We all have different personalities. But you know the real proof that you are a genuine believer is the fact that the Holy Spirit controls your temperament. Amen. You know the Bible says in James that everyone, James chapter 1, everyone should be quick to hear. Quick to hear. Be swift to hear. Be slow to speak. And be what? And be slow to what? To anger. Now, you know there are some temperaments that tend to be, <laughs> eh? they tend to be swift to speak, slow to hear, and quick <laughs> to anger. The opposite. There are some temperaments. But you see, when the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit takes control of your temperament, you begin to be conformed to what the Word of God says. Okay, let me talk about sanguines for instance. Generally, sanguines are very outgoing, and sanguines can talk and talk and talk and talk from morning till night. But when the Holy Spirit is controlling your temperament as a sanguine, you know, you remember that scripture be swift to hear, don't just talk and talk and talk. So many times you need to listen to other people because when you listen to them, you understand them, amen. And when you understand them, you are better able to walk with them. Praise the Lord. Okay, so then you now realize that it's not about talking and talking and talking. You caution yourself and you are slow to speak. How about the temperaments that are quick to anger? What's that temperament? Quick to anger temperament. What's that temperament? Choleric. You can give it to anybody. And they are quick to give it to you. Bah, bah, bah. Sharp, sharp. <laughs> so again, that scripture takes root. Be slow to anger. Not be swift to anger. So you can't say, everybody knows me. Oh, you know, I can scatter everywhere now. No. You are a Christian. You are a child of God. Bring forth the fruit of the spirit. Bring forth the fruit of the spirit. In every situation. Under every circumstance. Now, when you get born again, it's not as if who you are will change completely. But it becomes refined. Somebody say refined. I've met some cholerics that it will take you a while before you know they are choleric. Why? Because they are now spirit refined. So that brashness, the Holy Spirit has taken control of it. And then they pause before they do certain things. Now, they're still very passionate. They're still very pushful, but about good things. Amen. Because they've allowed the Holy Spirit to control their temperament. Amen. As children of God, we've got to bring forth fruit. Look at Philippians chapter 2 verse 19. He says, as children of God, we should be holy. We should be blameless. 
Amen. Even in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, we should still be holy and we should be blameless. He says in verse 14, do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless. KJV will say that you may be blameless and harmless, children of God, without fault. Amen. KJV says without rebuke. New King James Version says without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you do what? You shine forth as what? As lights. You shine forth. You are radiating. You are radiating. Everybody that comes in contact with you, they can see your light. They can see the fact that you are bringing a radiance. You are bringing a sweetness. You are bringing a freshness. Controlled by the spirit of God. Can I hear an amen? Blameless and harmless. You know, I found out that the more you bear the fruit of the spirit, the more blameless and harmless you become. The more blameless and harmless you become. And the more sometimes people in the world look at you and say, this person is a fool. Until they now get it. Then they change their mind and say, okay, ah, he's a Christian. You know, think about this. For those of us who got born again many, many years ago, some 30, 30 something years ago, you know there was something they used to call us. I don't hear it so much anymore. What did they used to call us? SU. Do they still call us that? Not really. You know why? Because there's so much blending between the world and the church. It's not distinct anymore. But that time it was so distinct. So many people were bearing the fruit of the spirit that even when you see them from a yard, you know, you say, that one come here. <laughs> SU. When you open your mouth, you say, ah, SU. Because when they tell their dirty jokes, you will not laugh. Sometimes some Christians now, they don't know who they are. They are telling, you know, maybe in their office, in their, their amongst friends, they are telling Jerry, they try to laugh. <laughs> That's not who you are. You bear the fruit of his spirit. You don't laugh at dirty jokes. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen. You don't cheat. You don't steal. They say, ah, this one is what? S U. One of the greatest compliments you can get from unbelievers is when they call you what? S U. Don't feel that. Say, ah, no, they are saying I'm old fashioned. No, they are saying that they are seeing God in you. Hallelujah. They are seeing the characteristics of God in you. So as a child of God, you should bear the fruit of the spirit. Now fruit bearing is a process. It's a process. Amen. You continue to bear. You continue to bear. You continue to bear. And, and you know, you increase in what you are bearing. We see, we see a progression in the way you are bearing the fruit of the spirit. What is the fruit of the spirit? Look at Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. The fruit of the spirit. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is what? There is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. If we live in the spirit, we must walk in the spirit. We must begin to bear the fruit of the spirit. Now the Bible says the fruit of the spirit is what? Love. Love. One of the first things you are going to see if you are bearing the fruit of the spirit is love. Your love life will begin to enlarge. Praise the Lord. Your capacity to love will begin to increase. You know, in John chapter 13, verse 35, John chapter 13, verse 35, Jesus Christ said, By this, all will know you are my disciples. If you have what? Love. Genuine, unconditional love. Not based on who you are or what you do. Genuine. It's unconditional. It's unconditional. Listen to me. If you are the kind of Christian who decides to relate with some people based on their economic status, you are not working in love yet. If all your friends are people that you feel comfortable with, you're not working in love yet. Because love will make you go out. It will make you reach out. So when you have that love amongst yourselves, so then we know, indeed, uh -huh, you are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know there's no love in the world. There's no love in the world. Even the people in the world who are busy singing about love, you know, 
so many songs about love. But have you found out that their relationships are always in shampoos? They marry, they divorce, they marry, they divorce, they marry, they divorce. Hello? There's no limit to how... I don't even know what's wrong with some of those people. <laughs> I would think if you marry and you divorce once, you marry again and you divorce, I would think by that time you will conclude that maybe marriage is not for you. <laughs> Some of them just keep having strings upon strings and they never learn. So there's no love in the world. There's no love in the world. But in the church, we bear the fruit of the Spirit. There's love. There's love. Hallelujah. I remember many years ago, you know, I believe that was the first church in the battle many years ago. There was a guy who started coming who had been released from prison. And this, <laughs> this guy, because he had spent some years in prison, I think he had rabies. So when he comes in, he will be stinking. And you, <laughs> and you notice when he comes in and he sits in a particular section, you will just see that there's a flow. Hello? Somebody say flow. Say flow. There's a flow of what? There's a flow of people from that area. They just shift and they move to another area of the church. But I noticed there was one particular brother. He was, even if that guy is sitting beside him, he will sit there. I observed him. Oh, service, second service, third service, I observed him. Then I called him. I said, you know, I've noticed that you are the only one. You know what he said to me? He said, but look, that, it can be anybody that that will happen to. He said, and if we all run away from him, how is he going to feel? And I noted, I said, this is somebody who understands and is bearing the fruit of the Spirit. Love. By this all will know that we are his disciples. If we have what? If we have love, one for another. One for when we identify with one another. Hallelujah. When we relate with one another in unconditional love. And you know, the thing is really, when you are a genuine child of God, you have to walk in love. The Bible says God is love. So how can you emanate from him and not walk in love? Praise the Lord. God is love. That is who he is. That's the nature of God. Love. So if you are a child of God, it's automatic. Something must flow out of you. And it is called what? Love. The child of a dog is what? The child of an elephant is what? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The child of a cat is what? The child of God is what? God. I like God. Yeah, like God, love flows out of you because God is love. First John 4, 7 and 8 says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. He that loves not does not know God because God is love. God is love. You want to say, I'm really, really a Christian. Check your love life. Check your love life. And I'm not talking about check how you, <laughs> you are in love with that person you want to marry or how you are in love with your spouse. That's part of it. Amen? But it's not limited to that. It's love for the people of God. Amen? Now, but you know it goes a step further. This love that we're talking about as the fruit of the Spirit goes a step further. Because there are some Christians who say, I don't have problems loving Christians. I can love Christians. But the Bible does not say you should love Christians alone. When it's the nature of God ozing out of you, you love even those who are not Christians. You love unbelievers. Praise the Lord. Matthew, Matthew chapter 5. <laughs> Matthew chapter 5 and verse 44. Manifestation of the sons of God. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 44. If you are there, say amen. <clears throat> what does it say? What does it say? But I said to you, do what? Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. Look up at me, everybody. How many of you have people you love? You have friends and you love your friends. Let me see your hands up. You have family members and you love your family members, okay? How many of you have ever had a party before? You ever had a party? Your wedding was a party. Your birthday was a party. Amen? You've had a party before. Your graduation was a party. Now, how many of you, when you are having your party, you invited your friends? 
You invited your friends. That's good. I mean, that's normal. You invite your friends. But how many of you also thought of your enemies and you invited them? But the Bible says love your enemies. <laughs> that's fruit of the Spirit. You say, okay, well, how many enemies do I have? <laughs> you know, there are some people in this office who have said, look, as long as I'm in this office, you will not rise. You will not be promoted. Okay, next party I'm having. In fact, I will put them on the high table. <laughs> the Bible says love your enemies. Let me tell you one thing I found out about life. When you want to match hatred with hatred, there are some people you cannot outdo in hatred. Let me tell you that. You cannot outdo some people in hatred. The only way you can outdo them is in what? Is in love. So don't waste your time. Say, yeah, this person is fighting. Even me, I will show that I can fight. That's wrong. That's not the spirit of God. And you cannot win because God is not going to back you up. Praise the Lord. It is love that you used to conquer. It is love that you used to And it's, it applies in every relationship. You know, one of the relationships that are dicey all over the world is the relationship of the issue of mother-in-law. How many of you have found out? That's one thing I found out. Irrespective of how the, you know, the Western world, how they are so cultured, they still have what they call mother-in-law problem. By the way, how do you men do it? We hardly hear of father-in-law problem. <laughs> Amen? Some of men just, they manage it, isn't it? They manage it. But you know, ladies, ah, all that passion, all that emotion, the mother will say, where were you when I was giving birth to this child? Hey! Where were you when I was sending the child to school? Where were you when you did when we didn't have money and I had to look for money to help this child? Did you not come into my son's life? It's usually, you know, the mother of the son, usually. Sometimes the mother of the daughter, but usually the mother of the son. Where were you? Now my son is a success. Is any people one girl, one half-legged girl now comes in and wants to sit and start enjoying my labor. Then the girl too comes and says, look, as you sent him to school, my parents too sent me to school. As you suffered, my parents too suffered. Your own time is gone. It is now my time. <laughs> Those are foolish girls. Those are foolish girls. You don't fight your mother-in-law for two reasons. If she wasn't there, you wouldn't have him. No matter what kind of excuse you want to start giving, hey, this, but you see, she's very tough. She's very... The issue is that most mothers-in-law get into the relationship too with apprehension. They've heard all kinds of stories about bad daughters-in-law who not allow the mother to enjoy all her labor. So they too come like, look, oh, hey, it will not happen to me the way it happened to my friend. So it is for you to reassure that woman and let her know that, no, we're not fighting, mama. I love you. I support you. Amen. I will let him fight if your son does not want to take care of you. That's when we will quarrel. Hello. I know a lady who said, you know, the, he was going to get married and the man was very apprehensive and said, look, I don't want to marry a wife that will now be causing problems and will be quarreling with my mother. You know what she said to her? I said, you don't need to be worried about me. She said, even if your mother is running crazy, I will be covering her with cloth. <laughs> It's a very deep statement. What she's trying to say, it's not as if she's being rude. She's just trying to say that no matter, even if she goes to the extreme, I will still be covering up and not allowing anybody to see that there's an issue. That's a good daughter-in-law. That's love. That's love. The other reason why you should never quarrel with your mother-in-law, I know sometimes there'll be issues, but just make up your mind. Your own position is going to be love. The other reason is that one day you will also become a mother-in-law. What you sow, you will what? You will reap. You will reap. But as a pastor, you don't know my mother-in-law. It doesn't matter. It's not who she is. It is who you are. You know, there's something I say. You can't fight me if I'm not fighting you. It doesn't matter who it is. If I'm not fighting you, you can't fight me. The problem arises when me, I now start feeling, okay, somebody is fighting me. That's when there's an issue. Amen. I thank God for mothers-in-law. I thank God for mothers. If they didn't labor, we would not be where we are today. We have to celebrate them. We have to honor them. Amen. That's love. That's love. Praise the Lord. I know some people will say, and you know some of us, <laughs> we've probably said some silly things too. Sometimes they probably say, ah, no, your mother cannot live with me. Why? 
One day you two will grow old. He said, ah, Pastor, me, I will save my money. I will make sure I have saved my money very well. Okay, fine. Be saving your money for old people's home. <laughs> we have to be tolerant. That's love. It's the nature of God. In fact, when you say, ah, my mother-in-law is tough, that's even good. That means you now know. Praise the Lord. You know. You know what you are going to be dealing with. You know. That's better. Hi, but mothers-in-law, that they are very gentle. Oh, there was a mother-in-law that I knew, like a very gentle look. She will be sweet. She will be smiling. But when she calls her son into the corner, and she will begin to poison the mind of the son. But she will be nice to the daughter. Isn't that the one that is dangerous? But the one who comes and says, Hey, look up. The last time I came to your house, your house girl gave me one meat. Are you the one who told her to give me one meat? The one who will tell you like that. He's better because you can kneel on your knees and start begging and say, ah, mama, today that house girl must leave. Then his mama will now say, I don't let the house girl leave. <laughs> Love. Praise the Lord. Love. Hallelujah. Love. Let me touch on another challenging situation that sometimes people have to grapple with. Suppose before you married your spouse, your spouse already had a child. That child cannot be different from your own children. It's love. When you are bearing the fruit of the spirit, love, you will not treat that child differently from the way you will treat your own children. You know why? Because that child is your husband's child the way your own children too are your husband's children. You will allow the fruit of the spirit to manifest. You will pray and say, God, give me a capacity to love this child the way I love my own children that I gave birth to. And I think that somebody who married a man, or maybe a woman, it can be vice versa, and knew there was already a child, you should have prayed for that capacity even before you got married. Amen. Fruit of the spirit. Fruit of the spirit. He should be so clear. People are relating with you. They interact and they're like, ah, ah, this is truly a child of God. Now, let me balance that. I will now say, ah, okay. So now the pastor has taught the women that if there are other children that I have that do not belong to her, she must love them unconditionally. That now makes me free. No, if you do that, you will go to hell. That's not what I'm saying. Amen. I said those, that something happened before they got married. Once you are married, you are married. You stay with your spouse and you live a whole life. And that's love. That's another aspect of love. Fruit of the Spirit. I've heard some men who will say things like, you know, um, Pastor, my wife, she's, she's difficult to live with. It doesn't matter. You have the fruit of the Spirit. You have the fruit of the Spirit. And I found out that every woman, no matter how nice and how good, from time to time, eh, she just acts erratic. How many of you husbands have found out? If you have found out, lift your hands. Don't worry, your wife is not looking. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes it's hormones. Sometimes there's something else bothering her that she will not tell you. And then she just starts reacting. Sometimes it's not you, she's reacting. She's reacting even to the children, against the children. And you're saying, calm down. Say, hey! Oh, no. Don't tell me to calm down. You get back to them. I also get back to them. Are you even the one? Ah. You're like, no, 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 please. We're not quarreling. Who says we're not quarreling? <laughs> at that time, it's the fruit of the spirit that comes in. If at that time, you now say, ah. Who are you talking to like that? I am the head of this family. And you too, you want to start fighting. You're not bearing the fruit of the spirit. At that time, what you want to cling to is the fruit of the spirit, which is love. You just, you just say, ah, ah, my sugar, my baby. You just start toasting her. He's later on when she has come down. You now sit her down and say, you know, there's a way you should never talk to me. When she has come later, that's when you now deal with that. But at that time, when she's acting for you, let your own fruit of the spirit override her own work of the flesh. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, so we're saying that this love is a love that must flow out of you to friends and to people that are nice and to people who may seem even not to be nice. And one thing I've also found out that sometimes when it even seems as if people are not nice, there, there's no permanent or nice person. Somebody that is not nice today may be nice tomorrow. Amen. You'll find that out about relationships. And that's why your position must always be a position of constant love. Somebody say constant love. Then the Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Let's go back to Galatians. Let's go back to Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Verse 22. It says the fruit of the Spirit is love. 
joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. The fruit of the Spirit is what? Is joy. Joy. What does that mean? It means gladness. It means delight. It means cheerfulness. The fruit that will come out of your spirit is cheerful, not depression. Not depression. Not acting like the, you know, the weight of the world is on your shoulders. It's not on your shoulders anyway. Hallelujah. Being cheerful. Being happy. Hallelujah. You know, you, you, from your spirit should come a joy that transcends all adversity. Transcends all adversity. Irrespective of the situation, there should be this joy that is deep within your spirit and is overflowing. Amen. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say what? Again, I say rejoice. In Romans chapter 14 verse 17, Romans chapter 14 verse 17, the Bible says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness, it is peace, and it is what? Joy in the Holy Ghost. It's not meat and drink. What does that mean? The kingdom of God is not about your bank balance, what you have, the things that you call comfort. Say your joy should never come from that. Your joy should never come from things. Your joy should always emanate out of your relationship with God. And that relationship, God will be constant. God will always love you. You know he always loves you, no matter what. Even when you've done something wrong, you say to God, God, I'm sorry, immediately he forgives you. His love for you is constant. Just like the love of a mother for the child. It's constant. It's constant. Hallelujah. You know, I was asking a question one day. I said, how many of you, maybe your child does something. It could even be that you, maybe you bought a brand new car and your, your child picked the key when you were not there. Hello. And your child bashed the car. And you were very, very upset with that child. Amen. And maybe you, you beat up the child and then you say to the child, maybe go to your room or something. But how many of you know that if you get a call, maybe there's something wrong with your child, you won't remember that you're angry with the child. Immediately you run. And as you are running there, you are praying and saying in the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost. You know, yeah, it doesn't matter. You, when you, you are angry with your child, it doesn't change the fact that you love that child and you want the best for that child. Amen. And that's how God's, God's love is. He loves us constantly. And so out of that, that confidence that God loves me no matter what, should come this joy that adversity cannot suppress. That joy should be bubbling on your inside all the time. You know, if you are the kind of Christian that the only time you are joyful is when you have money, you are not bearing the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is joy. Even in the midst of adversity. You know, there's a friend of ours who said he had this auntie. The auntie had been born again for years. And she was a Christian. I said this auntie had only one child. I don't know what happened to the child. The child fell ill. The child was already grown. He was already a man. And the child fell ill. And the auntie too was already, you know, well up in age. And they took the child to the hospital. The child was admitted for a while. And the child wasn't getting better. The child got worse. And the doctor started saying, it looks as if this man is going to die. And everybody was wondering, hey, should this happen? How will we tell the mother? How will we tell the mother? Everybody was just so afraid. And so one day in the morning, the mother came to the hospital. And the mother asked after the son. And they said, sorry, ma. He passed on. And people were just, you know, waiting that, ah, hey, what will happen today? You know, they said when they said that, the woman just shouted, praise the Lord. The people in that hospital can never forget that experience. The impression of a Christian that they have seen can never, that experience cannot should. When they are thinking of the, you know, the relationship with God that goes beyond any kind of adversity. I mean, what kind of adversity can be worse? In that time, you know what emanated was still praise to God. It doesn't mean she won't feel pain, but a joy that goes beyond the pain. At least she knows he died in Christ. She is in Christ. They will meet again one day. Amen. Joy. Somebody say joy. Somebody say joy. Now for most of us, there's a lot of trouble that will not even happen to us. And it's even funny when the little one that happens sometimes, uh, uh, whatever, and then we just start misbehaving. No. It's not out of what you have. It's out of that relationship, an overflow of that relationship that you have. Joy that is based on your relationship. Amen. You know, I'm not joyful because I get things from God. I'm not joyful because I have things. I'm joyful because God gave it to me. How many of you understand the difference? There's a difference. A 
your joy should come from the fact that, oh, I prayed. God honored me and answered my prayers. God, I'm so thankful that there's an overflow of that relationship that I have that will make you hear my prayers and answer my prayers. It's not the thing. So if God gives me something and God decides that for whatever reason, either I should give it out or he, or he takes it away from me in any other way, I should still be joyful. Because my joy is not coming from that thing. My joy is coming out of an overflow of a relationship with the Almighty God. That's the, joy. That's the fruit of the Spirit. That's the fruit of the Spirit. There are some people that I know. If you see them smiling, just know there's money. <laughs> you just know, you are singing. Just know there's money. There's money. You can check the account and be sure there's money there. But if you see them, nobody knows. The troubles I see. Mm. You say, how are you? Even the look they gave you, if you are not careful, your own joy can be... <laughs> And be cancelled out. <laughs> Somebody shout joy. joy! Hallelujah! A joy also that makes you rejoice with others. That's joy emanating from your spirit. Sometimes people will have something that you are looking for. Joy should emanate from you. Praise the Lord. We've been praying, 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 you know, for things. I remember all these things, they are things. And then your neighbor now gets it. If your friend in church gets it, there should be joy from you, not jealousy. That's not the fruit of the spirit. Joy. The Bible says we should rejoice with those who rejoice. Praise the Lord. Romans 12, 15 says that. And then we should weep with those who weep. Joy. Joy. You know, there's this lady I know. She's been a Christian for a number of years. Every time you see her, there's this joy on her face. There's this deep joy. There's this, this contentment. And I remember the last time I saw her, you know, when I look at the car they were driving, I mean, it was not a new car. But there was this joy. She had friends who were by far richer than her. There was just this joy and this contentment. That's how every Christian not to be. This deep joy. The joy in your relationship that you have with God, that you are growing spiritually. That's the joy. That's the, that's, that's the genuineness of the spirit. Amen. Then the Bible says also that the fruit of the spirit is peace. In John 14, 27, Jesus Christ said, my peace I give to you. My peace I live with you. Not as the world gives. Peace. Peace, the ability to live with peace, even with yourself, not to be angry with yourself. It's the fruit of the spirit. There's some people are always angry with themselves. They're banging their head. No, peace. Stop your telling about peace. The fruit of the spirit makes you such that you are not always quarreling. Some people are always quarreling. They always find one issue or the other. One thing to complain about. Peace. Peace. Hallelujah. Peace and tranquility that comes out of absolute trust in God. And then the Bible says also that the fruit of the spirit is long suffering. Can you wait on God's time without compromising? Long suffering. Can you wait until you are blessed? Can you wait? Say, I will wait until my change comes. Can you wait until your change comes? Many times, you know, God has said, ask and you will receive. But it doesn't tell you the time. Amen. Concerning so many, it doesn't tell you the time. You're just praying and God is reassuring you. I am with you, I am with you. And I will turn things around. But it doesn't tell you when it's going to turn it around. Hallelujah. Long suffering. The fruit of the Spirit keys in at that time. That you are not discouraged. Praise the Lord. Then kindness is something that will flow. And you know when you look at all these things, you find out that when there's love as a foundation, every other thing will flow forth out of that platform of love. So kindness will ooze out of you. Gentleness will ooze out of you. Goodness will ooze out of you. Faithfulness. You won't be somebody that is not reliable. You'll be somebody that you can be there for the long haul. That's faithfulness. It will come out of your spirit because you are bearing the fruit of the spirit. Hallelujah. And then finally, self-control. You won't behave anyhow. You know how I say, this person is unpredictable. That person is not bearing the fruit of the spirit. When the person is bearing the fruit of the spirit, the person is controlled by the Holy Spirit, not by situations. Not by, because you see, situations and circumstances will always change, but the word of God will always be constant. Hallelujah. So bear the fruit of the spirit. How do you bear the fruit of the spirit? Through the word. The word will enable you to bear the fruit of the spirit. You meditate on the word of God. You meditate on the word of God. You meditate on the word of God. Amen. Be quick to hear. Be slow to speak. Be slow to run. You meditate on the word of God. So you find out that when you get into some situations and there's some agitation, that scripture rises up on the inside of you. It allows you to bear fruit. When the word of God takes root, it will come forth as fruit. Let's bow our heads and let's begin to talk to the Lord. Hallelujah. Pray and say, God, help and enable me 
to bear the fruit of the spirit. I do not want to be a Christian that is not bearing fruit. I want to bear fruit. As a Christian, you don't have enemies. The only enemy we have is the devil. You do not have enemies. You love people. Let's begin to express that love. And if there's anybody you have been holding in your heart, I want to say, God, I'm sorry. I now realize that as a Christian, my fruit is love. And I should not hold anything against anybody. I should always walk in love. Let's talk to God. Perhaps there's a family member that you're even holding and you haven't for forgiven. This is the time to say, God, I'm sorry. I should never, never have even quarreled with that person. God, please forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Rambo Sukuroba Bash Kalianda Sata. If you are here today and you're not born again, the fruit of the Spirit can only be born by those who are born of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit will only flow, flow, flow forth from those who are born of the Spirit. So we want to give you an opportunity. If you are here this morning and you are not born again, we want to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So I want you to pray after me if you are not born again. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Forgive me my sins. Wash me clean. Help and enable me to be all that you have called me to be. I surrender all to you and I will serve you eternally in the mighty name of Jesus. Now pray, this is a new year. We've termed this the year of our manifestation. Pray for yourself that throughout this year you will manifest as a child of God. The people who used to know you will begin to testify that indeed they can see manifestation through your life that you're a child of God. That above all, God himself will approve of you and say that indeed that you are that you are indeed a child of God.